Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in Chicago, Illinois, on this Tuesday in the 10th week after Pentecost and the commemoration of St. Dominic. I will leave you to read the hagiography that's on the BSG app at your convenience. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dominic uh, that I read from a, from a Dominican friar this morning. <clears throat> Dominic was a Spanish priest and founder of the order of preachers known as the Dominicans. This order proclaims to praise, to bless, and to preach. He studied and worked hard to contradict the teachings of the Albigensians and bring people back to the church. He abstained from meat. He did not own a bed and slept on the floor. While St. Dominic is celebrated each year on August 8th, he actually died on August 6th, the Feast of the Transfiguration. Typically, saints are remembered on the anniversary of their death as it recalls their entrance into heaven. However, sometimes that date is an already existing feast and the celebration is transferred to the closest available day. In the case of St. Dominic, he died on August 6th, which is the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. This date has great significance as St. Dominic is highly regarded as one of the most influential saints in the Western Church. Furthermore, many recognize St. Dominic's extraordinary holiness during his life and even noted how he was a man full of light. In many ways, St. Dominic was transfigured by Jesus during his life and let the light of his life shine upon all he encountered. It's then very fitting that St. Dominic died on the Transfiguration, as he was able to finally experience the fullness of Jesus' light on that day and the eternal joy of Jesus' presence. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him. For those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer to pray the office, morning prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by the Venite on page 82. Today's Psalms are 38, 39, and 40, beginning on page 636. The Canticles are 13 and 18 on pages 90 and 93. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine is already lit. If that's part of your practice, I encourage you to do that now. We'll take just a moment and begin with morning prayer on this Tuesday in the 10th week after Pentecost and the commemoration of St. Dominic. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 38, 39, and 40, beginning on page 636. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me. And your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me. Like a heavy burden, they are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester. By reason of my foolishness, I'm utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go about in mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I'm utterly numb and crushed. 
I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O Lord, you know all my desires. And my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding. My strength has failed me. And the brightness of my eyes has gone from me. My friends and companions draw back from my affliction. My neighbors stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin and plot treachery all the day long. But I'm like the deaf who do not hear. Like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I become like one who does not hear. And from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord, my God. For I said, do not let them rejoice at my expense. Those who gloat over me when my foot slips. Truly, I am on the verge of falling. And my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity. And be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty. And many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me. Because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me. O Lord of my salvation. I said I will keep watch upon my ways so that I do not offend with my tongue. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while the wicked are in my presence. So I held my tongue and said nothing. I refrained from rash words, but my pain became unbearable. My heart was hot within me while I pondered the fire burst into flame. I spoke out with my tongue. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days, so that I may know how short my life is. You have given me a mere handful of days, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Truly, even those who stand erect are but a puff of wind. We walk about like a shadow, and in vain we are in turmoil. We heap up riches and cannot tell who will gather them. And now, what is my hope? O Lord, my hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. And do not make me the taunt of the fool. I fell silent and did not open my mouth. And surely it was you that did it. Take your affliction from me. I am worn down by the blows of your hand. With rebukes for sin, you punish us. Like a moth, you eat away all that is dear to us. Truly, everyone is but a puff of wind. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am but a sojourner with you. A wayfarer as all my forebears were. Turn your gaze from me that I may be glad again. Before I go my way and am no more. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. 
Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them. But they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God, your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced to take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say, aha, and gloat over me be confounded because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry, O oh my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Just give me a moment, please. reading from the second book of Samuel. King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. May this be instruction for the people, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have wrought it, you have wrought all this greatness so that your servant may know it. Therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is no one like you, and there is no God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Who is like your people, like Israel? Is there another nation on earth whose God went on to redeem it as a people and to make a name for himself, doing great and awesome things for them by driving out before his people nations and their gods? And you establish your people Israel for yourself to be your people forever. And you, O Lord, <clears throat> became their God. And now, O Lord God, as for the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, confirm it forever. Do as you have promised. Thus your name will be magnified forever in the saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. 
here ends the reading. Canticle 13, a song of praise on page 90. Glory to you, Lord, God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, some of the Jewish leaders made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. They said, this man is persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said, if it were a matter of crime or serious villainy, I would be justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names in your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he dismissed them from the tribunal. Then all of them seized Sosthenes, the official of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of these things. After staying there for a considerable time, Paul said farewell to the believers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Sencre, he had his hair cut, for he was under a vow. When they reached Ephesus, he left them there, but first he himself went into the synagogue and had a discussion with the people there. When they asked him to stay longer, he declined, but on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he had landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church, and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from place to place to the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Achaia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers, for he powerfully refuted the Jewish people in public showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. Here ends the reading. Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, we worship and praise dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The Apostles, <coughs> excuse me, the Apostles Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. <clears throat> he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, grant unto your people a hunger for your word and an urgent longing to share your gospel, that, like your servant Dominic, we might labor to bring the whole world <coughs> excuse me again, to the knowledge and love of you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble service, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. I invite you to offer whatever prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings you may have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, please put it in the chat feature of this broadcast. In the lower right toward the middle, you see a little bubble. Hover your mouse there, you'll see chat with everyone. Put your prayer request there. I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers which are about to follow. And during the week of August 6th, we pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. For the sick, Phyllis, Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B., Jerry C., Brad, Mary, Killian, Rita, Dennis, Maureen, Mary, Tom R., Ed, Thomas, Priest, Susan T., former President Carter, Ken, Deacon, Mary, Barbara, Richard, Michael, Presiding Bishop, John, Manny, Chris, Nancy, Jeff, Connie, Michael N., Carlos, Verrill, Roman, Rodney, Bishop, Mary Kay, Kevin, Leslie, James, Priest, and all with COVID-19. For those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, for all who mourn, especially Duda and Allison, for peace of mind for Shane, Priest, for all victims of gun violence, for those who are traveling, for all refugees and migrants, for those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction, for peace throughout the world, especially in Ukraine, Sudan, Ethiopia, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, and Niger, and for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. For all families and children in this city and state, for all expected parents, for all prisoners, especially Oscar, Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. For members of our military services on active duty, Andre, Ricky, Owen, Max, Celeste, and Nate. For Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector-elect, whose last Sunday at St. Mary's, Kansas City was just this past Sunday, for Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. For the birthdays of Will Cronenwet, Brendan Harrison, Josiah Perryman, Steve Trapp, Matt Rogers, and Jeff Lee Bishop, for Marissa Baker, Ruth Curry, Gary Norcross, Greg Bradley, and Luis Garcia Juarez. For the wedding anniversaries of the Reverend Adam Spencer and Rose Sengenberger, Nick Curry and Ruth Martin, Tim and Evie Coe, Jerry DeMuth <clears throat> and Rosemary Gooden, and Greg and Janine Singleton. And we pray for the departed, remembering Michael Bice, priest and physician, William Friedkin, Gloria Kosinski, 
all victims of gun violence, all who have died of COVID-19. And at the anniversaries of their deaths, for Louise Witt, Anita Irwin, Anita Lloyd Rogers, Gladys Rosenthal, Leo Williams, John Nielsen, Hillary Hawthorne, Cecilia Armand, Emily Nugent, James Mar Parsegian, Leonard Stewart, Daryl Fox, and Edith Brown. And we offer this prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsel may yet prevail and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And that prayer comes to us courtesy of the good people of St. Matthew's Westminster. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love for the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. That concludes morning prayer on this Tuesday in the 10th week of after Pentecost and the commemoration of Dominic. Thanks so much for this morning. We're here every morning on Google Meet at 8.30. Since it is Tuesday, we have evening prayer also on Google Meet at 5.30. For tomorrow, <coughs> Wednesday, and Friday, we have a morning mass at 7.30, Wednesday evening at 6.30, Thursday at noon. We have the rosary on Saturday morning at 9.30, followed by the healing mass at 10, and our regular round of services on Sunday at 8, 9, and 11. Thank you so much for being here with us. Have yourself a great day, everyone. God bless. Stay safe out there.